Welcome to Beyond the Shoots is presented by Parasite Systems. I'm your host, Doug Simcox, and today I'm recording in Taylorsville, Kentucky. Now, we have a very special report, a very special episode for you. We've got the cowboy Marlon Harris, and you remember him from the Mountain Cove, Georgia Cowboy Roadie Reunion that's held each Labor Day weekend. Well, he has been on the road. He's on special report for BTC, special assignment for BTC. He has been at the Four Sixes Remuda Horse Sale in Guthrie, Texas. Marlon, how are you today? I'm great. Uh, just had a wonderful time. Had a great event. And this is my third year to attend the event. And just what a class act place I was at at the Four Sixes. You bet. You bet. So it's noon on Sunday. It is September 29th. Take us back to the beginning. You took off and you decided to drive this year. On You took off on Wednesday? Yeah. I got me a rental car on Wednesday, and uh, it was a little warm there in Georgia, and I just uh, had a little time on my hands, and I said, you know, I, I need to go on out there to the sale. It's my third year. I just didn't want to miss it. It means a lot to me to get to go out there and see all some friends and some great horses. And So I left Wednesday, and I got out there outside of Abilene on Thursday afternoon and got up real early. Went on up to Guthrie, and the demo started that day. And what that means is they show all the horses that are going to sell the next day in the ring, which would be Saturday. So, so what does demo day look like for our listeners, Marlon? What each horse that's up for sale is shown, and what are some of the di- different events or different disciplines that these horses are trained for? Well. What happened on on Friday morning, about 10 o'clock, they bring all the horses out, and they usually start with the rainers, the cutters, and and they they cut some cattle, they rope some cows, freelance like you're ranching, like you've just roped a cow in the pasture and dragged it up to the fire, that type thing. They may run a raining pattern with him, just different things like that. And then they'll, they'll do... 50, 60, I think there was a total of 156 horses, and I think there was five scratches. So we got to see 150 horses work. So right after they did that, then they load the cattle and they team rope on them and head and heel on them and let you see it all in the demo there. And, and then something new this year that they haven't done is, as you know, they have a, a wonderful stud barn and they instead of just everybody going into the stud barn and seeing the horses in the in the stalls they actually brought them all out into the arena for like a demo lead and that was new this year they haven't done that before but actually that was a nice addition to to get to see the studs out in the open being led which shows a lot about their temperament and get to see a little more with it and so that was new this year. It was it was really very 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 good. And and the hundred and fifty plus horses that they were selling. Now the way I'm understanding it, this is their annual remuda sale. So these are all horses that were raised on the four sixes ranch. Well, a lot of them were, and there's five consigners there. The four sixes is there. Pitchfork, which is right next door, the Bates Landing Cattle Company, and also Wagon Wheel and King Ranch all consigned horses to this sale. So, neat thing is, is you know, the Cowboys say from the Bates Cattle Company, Landing Cattle Company, they would ride these horses all year. These are they're using horses on the ranch that they use every day, and then each ranch picks out which ones they want to sell that year. So really neat neat thing here, Doug, is when you're watching the demos and they get their demo and the horse, you can go right up to the cowboy that rode the horse, has been riding the horse for a year or two. They decided they were going to sell the horse. Well, 
it's kind of a family affair. You're liable to see his little boy sitting up on the horse, and you can tell it's a, they've been taking care of this horse for a year, two years, and it's part of the family. So if you get to actually visit with him, he'll tell you all about it, and everybody is so friendly. They, they want to see you know everything about that horse that, that there is to know. And how old, Marlon, are these horses they're selling? What are the ages? Well, out of all the horses there, there was only one 20-year-old horse that was there. And he still brought, I think he still brought nearly 15,000. He's 20. But, oh, you broke uh, up there. You broke up there. You broke up there just for a minute. So the 20-year-old brought how much? Just under fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars, but he was a nice, nice using horse. And then they'll have some fillies. They'll have some young, young horses that will be potentially studs, little stallion horses, yearlings that could be used as a stallion later on. And then they go up from two years old, and then you'll have some really nice five and six year old buildings. And then they go on up to. 10 and 12 years old, but that's usually the deal. And a lot of the mares are bred already. It becomes their their bred, and a lot of them, one mare sold, and she had, I think, like when they sold her, they gave away 20 straws of semen that went with her. Mm-hmm. Now, it's, uh, it's a variety of horses, and I, as I was telling my wife, a lot of these horses you see on Yellowstone, the show, Taylor Sheridan, furnishes all the, his own horses for the show. He doesn't bring in any outside horses. They're all his horses. So the one horse that was the top seller had been rode on Yellowstone last season, and he was the top seller of the group. I think he was around six or seven years old, brought $120,000. Holy cow. And, and a stud horse? No, he is a gilded. Gilded. Okay. Hundred and twenty thousand. And and a using horse, a reining horse, cutting horse, what 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 do you think? I I think this horse could probably do a little bit of everything. I, I know he can head and heel, he can cut a little, run a reining pattern, you can catch a guy in the middle of the field and drag him to the fire. This was just a really, really nice horse and I was setting kind of semi near the family that bought it and it got i i mean once they got to a hundred thousand it was still a bidding war all the way to 120 grand from a gentleman that was up in the stands behind me now you have to remember also they have the internet and all the horses are online there you can bid online so you're not only at the sale but you can be at your office or home bidding on the horses so tell us a little bit what you know about this Four Sixes, the Four Sixes Ranch, Marlon. Well, it's, it was recently, three years ago, bought by Taylor Sheraton, the inventor of Yellowstone and all the other Paramount Plus series hits he has. And he has a home on there. The family sold it to him three years ago. I think their name was Burnett or something similar to that and they had owned that ranch since it seems like the beginning of the time i'd have to go back up I've, I've got you actually a program for you as a souvenir but yeah, taylor sheridan bought it and I, I think really the neat thing about this is is what i know of taylor sheridan he is he wants to keep the ranch like it has been for a hundred years and i really believe that and one thing about the sale, Doug, that is, impresses me every year as I go, I never hear a foul cuss word out of no one. I never hear a political statement, thank goodness. And also, I never see anybody disgruntled, even though the hamburger line may be very long. <laughs> yeah. I never heard, I never seen anybody disgruntled. I, all I saw was people with catalogs, with their families there, with a big smile on their face, and everybody's just looking at nice horses. And people ask them, hey, where are you from? And, you know, <laughs> yeah. tell their little story. And, and 
I, I was at lunch one day and I was sitting there and a very nice gentleman and with his family and I found out that he was from Fort Worth and he was Taylor Sheridan's four sixes ranch controller. And of course I gave him one of our business cards yeah. and he was a really nice guy and he said he had just taken over his controller when Taylor Sheridan bought the ranch. He did work for the former family that owned it. So pretty 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 fun just getting to talk to him and, and everything. And, it was, it was real nice. and when you say controller, financial controller. That's right. He is the accountant, basically. <laughs> Glorified name for accountant. <laughs> now, you know, that's my background. It would be interesting. A cowboy controller running working at the four sixes. That would be that would be an interesting interview, at least for me, <laughs> to get on BTC here, Marlon. Yeah, well, he has our card. Okay. And I, I had quite a good chance to visit with him. And I also got to visit with Red, Mr. Red Stegall. Yes. And yes. that was a real pleasure for me. I've been, I've got pictures from other years from different people, but that was a real honor. And they started out the sale, of course, with a prayer from mm -hmm. Mr. Stegall. Okay. And it was really touching, very, very touching prayer. Also, that everybody stood for the national anthem as all cowboys and cowgirls do. And that was, that was always really nice too. The one thing that I used to see here, this is my third year to go, as I said, but year, not last year, but the year before that, that was right before Taylor Sheridan made the clothes on the ranch. And my good friend that I worked he was not only a customer, but he was a great friend and a friend to everybody. And his name was Dr. Ed Blodgett. And Ed was the guy that came from Texas A&M. He put that whole breeding program together. And he, he was just really a, a friend to everybody. I had saw him at the Road to Horse in Lexington, saw him at the Heritage Sale in Oklahoma City. I saw him every year at the American Association of Equine Practitioners meeting and just a fantastic man. Well, after that first year, old man, not long after that, Dr. Ed passed away. Oh. And, and sad, sad story. So every time I, I'm there, I can't help but just think about my buddy. And But he's everybody's friend. I mean, everybody in the world loved him. And I did get to meet the new veterinarian. I'm sorry, I don't have his name. He is great. He was a very young man, big shoes to fill there for Dr. Ed Blodgett, but he was a hard worker. He was right in the ring, just like Doc would have been in the past, looking at all the horses. And it, it was a first class act from the start till the finish. And I, like I said, I wasn't going to go. And then I sat there in my home and I said, I got to go. I just got to go. And you may know already that we had a tremendous amount of storms at, in the southeast last this week. And everybody's calling me up going, you left Claire yeah. at the farm with the storms. And I said, well, uh, I, she's pretty tough. She's been through a storm before, so <laughs> she handled it. But thank the Lord that my area did not get it as bad as like Asheville and South Georgia and up in Gatlinburg. So the good Lord blessed us right there for no damage at my home. No wind damage, nothing, no flooding. Not, a, not that I know of. My wife has, has a tendency not to tell me any bad news when I'm on the road. <laughs> but, I, but, but there was a lot of rain, and she said, I've never had to let this much water out of the swimming pool if I did this last week. Oh, so my goodness. Okay. I, guess everything, I guess everything's okay. Okay, okay. And and back to the four sixes, they have a full-time on-staff vet, veterinary. Is that correct? That That is correct. And he is not only in charge of the breeding program, the horses, but he's also in charge of the cattle, too. Okay. Then... There's, there's a lot of interns that come there and work. Uh, all the major colleges were there from Tarleton and A&M. And 
neat thing about the sale also is, is they had a lot of students from the different vet colleges and colleges riding around on side by sides, giving you a ride, carrying oh, wow. you places oh, wow. from the parking lot, carrying you to the heat tent, and just the nicest group of young people that you ever want to meet. Friendly, super nice, super nice kids. Mm -hmm. And and speaking of which, how were the crowds? Big big crowds, big numbers. Place was full. The the demo area, which they opened it up, the whole arena, the whole indoor arena is opened up on the demo day. So all the big the side, which I call the grandstand, was packed. Okay. Was packed. You could not get a seat in there. People were standing at the front door, at the back door. It was just huge. But then uh, when the sale started, then what happens on, on Friday night after the demo, they bring the sale ring in, set it up, and then set all the tables around it. And they have special sections for Taylor Sheridan to set at, special sections for the different owners from the different other ranches, like King Ranch, will have their own table also. So it's, it's really a very nice deal. But the, but the great thing about it is, is, okay, they did the demo on Friday, so they have a big screen TV over the, over the auctioneer. Well, they don't ride them into the sale ring. They lead them. And maybe the cowboy's been riding him a year or so, and he leads him in, or his little boy or somebody. And that's when the auction bidding starts from the auctioneer. But you can look at the top at the screen and see the horse demo from the day before or the weeks before. And that really adds to it right there to be able to see it while he's in the rain and him standing there and watching him work the weeks before. Oh, wow. Okay. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. And when did the sale start on? Well, first off, what went on Friday night? Was there a party or anything? Marlon? Yes, it is. It's great. Uh, they had, uh, I believe it was New Trina, where they feed sponsor there, even though Karina and some of the other companies are there. But I believe New Trina sponsored the party that night and the dinner. So on Friday night, it's about six o'clock, they threw out a spread of food like you could not believe, and it was free to everybody. And I believe that was sponsored by Neutrina. And they had a they had a band, a real famous guy play. I'm not much on knowing who famous country western stars are. Somebody famous was playing. <laughs> 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 and, and great food, dancing, partying, having a great time, but everything under really good control. And just a class act. And everybody having a good time visiting, eating some great food and dancing. And just really, really a top-notch event. Okay. And everybody goes home or wherever they're staying. And then the sale started at 1030 the next morning when they did the kick it all off. And it went until about 4 o'clock. Till about 4 o'clock. Okay. And where did you stay Friday night? How, how far away did you have to stay? Well, that, that's an interesting question. There's not a lot of places to stay. Give me a little bit of history. The first two years I went there, I stayed up in Paducah, which is 30 miles away, and I stayed at the Hunter's Lodge. Well, the Hunter's Lodge has been converted, was a funeral parlor, and was converted into a hotel. Well, I stayed there last year and everything in the last two years, and that's where a lot of people stay. A little weird, of course, but <laughs> this year I couldn't get a room there, and I stayed 30 miles down the road in a little town of Aberton, Aberton or somewhere in a, in a nice room. Well, I don't know if it's a nice room. <laughs> it was a damn end, but you got to understand this is West Texas. It was comfortable and clean, and the people who owned it were very nice. Okay. And the, the sale then kicked off Saturday morning. And 
what were what was some of the what were some of the averages of prices you were seeing coming through? Did it matter again if they're a general using horse or this is a rainer or, or this is a cutting horse or whatever? Well, the, the horses I like, of course, are the six year old Geldens, and they are the they usually for the same price as they were last year, which is on an average of thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand, uh, of course. Okay. Yeah, of course, that would be the ones I pick for Claire and I as a barrel horse or head and healing horse. And they averaged, they were around six years old, and I think they averaged about 30,000. Uh -huh. Then there was the four year olds that came, and some actually coming three year olds that brought, they averaged about 20,000 every one of them. And they were nice horses, but next year at that time, those horses will be probably in the 30 to 35 to 40 range. Mm -hmm. And if they got a little color to them, like Palomina, you can count on paying about 45. Really? That much of a difference because they're Palominos? Yeah, last year, my favorite horse, that Dusty Road, and I had my picture made with him several times, and he, he brought 45,000, and I asked the guy that rode him in the sale and trained him and rode him and i asked him i said where do you hear oh yellow at he said he went down to san angelo somewhere said they ain't brought him back so he must be doing pretty good <laughs> okay uh, but he was my favorite he brought 45 and uh, of course i'm a yellow horse man mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. always out there yeah oh okay okay and prices are strong like you've seen them? Everybody's feeling good? I don't see them going down. I I will tell you, I, I don't know if it was the show Yellowstone that helped bring these prices up, but they're sure not going down. And I've talked to a lot of people there that brokered a lot of horses, and they don't see it changing for several years. And they were all very happy about it. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not for sure I am because I'm probably going to have to buy a horse and sell my boat, but uh, <laughs> that's life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that's uh, interesting. But all, of, all in all, wonderful event. Class act by the four sixes. The, every cowboy there, class act, cowgirl, everybody, the whole event. Just great. Okay. And did you get to see, talk to Taylor Sheridan? No, I, I did. I kind of, you know, last year he had his wife, Barrett, and son, and I I tried to just, I know everybody in the world's wanting to get their picture made with him, and I'm, I'm kind of respectful kind of guy of his privacy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, I, I just didn't really want to want to do that, even though but everywhere in Texas, of course. But he, last year he had his bodyguard with him too, oh, wow. and I, I thought, I thought, well, I don't really need to get beat up. <laughs> so, but, but one thing that was different this year, Doug, I noticed that times are changing. Mm -hmm. When I first got there on Saturday, I noticed there was a team of officers. And they had dogs with them, and they were they were scanning the place uh, for security, which oh. I've never seen that before. But I thought that was really good that Taylor Sheridan did it, took it upon himself to make sure the security there was great. Okay. And okay. they had they had the big sniffing dogs, and they were they were not letting any area go without being checked. Okay. Okay, well, that is excellent. That is excellent. Today's day and times, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. And and how the, I know you're on your way back now. Where are you? Are, are you, yeah, where are you now? Well, I am I'm somewhere around Tyler, Texas, and I regret that I cannot stop to see my great friend, Mike Fletcher. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're in the middle of their church service right now and would love to stop and see him. And I'd love to stop and see everybody. But I am going to be back out here very soon to the reunion 
that is at the Spur on the Ministry, which is the three churches coming together, Triple Cross, Spur of Scott Fletcher's Church, Sold Out Ministries in Winsboro. And as I drive across this road, I've been driving since, on this road since I was 16 years old. And I believe I know everybody in every town between my rodeo career and my animal health career. I know somebody somewhere and I probably stayed at their house and ate at their mother's food table. And I call this the Carefree Highway. Carefree Highway, uh, okay. And, and it is because it's, I love I-20. I like mm -hmm. going through all these towns. And I have a memory of so many great people that I know in these towns. And I wish I could stop and see them all. But uh, sooner or later, i got to get on back to my wife. I'll be leaving a week from next Friday to go up to the reunion mm -hmm. at Jerry Kids at the Rocky Cave. Okay. Love Valley, North Carolina for that reunion. So want to get home, get rested up so I hit the road again and go to that reunion. And then not long after that, it'll be the Texas reunion. It's, you're, you're almost as busy, busy as when you was rodeoing, Marlon. Well, I'm not beat up as bad, for sure. <laughs> and the miles are okay? You're doing all right? You're staying awake? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've listened to several podcasts of ours this week and other people's podcasts. I, I listened to the Aid in the Band with Marty on the way out here, which is great. <laughs> you did a great job of analyzing how much money we did make. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was an experiment. I'd not done anything quite like that before. Um but I, I just have been so intrigued with that article, you know, since I met Tom Woods and, of course, you and, and Marty Martins. It's just like all these perfect things come together. Oh, man, I, I don't know how we lived, uh, but we did. And yeah. Man, I, I never did worry at one time that I wasn't going to make it. I, 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 it never crossed my mind. I was having so much fun. I really didn't really care. You bet. You bet. Isn't that something? And what really stands out for me is what you were talking about, the, you know, just the memories and the relationships you've made, Marlon, as you've traveled I-20, both for work, you know, and for rodeoing. And we talk about a lot of, like today, we've talked about horse prices and, and everything, but what really stands out for me uh, is, again, the, the people that you met, you know, the, the way you described them, we really are all about relationships, you know. Yes, and I cherish every one of them, cherish every one of them. And, and you know, not only the, the people that I travel with, but their families were always so good to us. And my mom and dad passed it forward, too, and I can remember waking up at my mom dad's house down there in Austell, Georgia, and they'd be a, a different horse tied to a different tree. They'd be horse trailers all over the place, cowboys sleeping all over the bed, all over the floors, and my mom steadily a cook and trying to feed everybody and wash all their clothes, and that's the exact example of what went on wherever we went. My mom and dad were the same example. You bet. You bet. That's absolutely perfect. And and one last thing before we go, we we are going to put an episode up about your horse when you were a youngster, Marlon. Could you give <laughs> give the folks about a thirty second promo for for that episode? It's going to be coming out in about a week. Well, it's crazy when you, this horse I had was his name was Barmona Sam. His name was really Sam, and I saw a picture of him picture of that western horseman that looked just like him and his name was Barmona Sam so I changed his name to Barmona Sam <laughs> and he was a big old ugly buckskin Appaloosa and I gotta tell you I, he was he was a rank I think I might have been my pre-trading for the rodeo business <laughs> because this horse he 
And there's an episode you'll hear on there of the time that I finally got a trailer and didn't have to ride him to all the shows. <laughs> and I had this 65 Mustang and had an open trailer. And as I was driving to the horse show for one of the very first times, I look back and that trailer's a rocket. And I look back and old bar mama Sam jumped out of that open trailer right on top of my 65 Mustang. He banked off, went over in the ditch, and run three miles home and had to make two left turns. And, and when I got home there, I was trying to, I was going to get out and give him a little whooping. Well, he had smushed the top down on that Mustang so far I couldn't get out. My dad had to come out there and get a crowbar and get me out. Okay. More of the story. Yeah. More of the story. Try to explain this to your insurance company. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my. Well, that episode's going to be coming out. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I think you're going to really, really enjoy it. Any last words before we say goodbye here, Marlon? Nah, just thanks for everything you're doing. And thanks to the other people that are doing podcasts. I, when I was at the sale, everybody was talking about different podcasts and how much they mean to them. And, and I find that children really like listening to them. Okay. It's kind of an education. And I sat with a lot of different people and talked to them. And they said, yeah, podcast is the way to go. We can drive down the road and listen to something and laugh the whole time. <laughs> so, so, so thank you, Doug. I, I just really enjoyed getting to know you. And we, we've had a good time of laughing and talking to them about a lot of cool stuff. That's for sure. That's for sure. Well, I appreciate this conversation today. And to our listeners, we hope that you enjoyed this episode of our podcast with Mr. Marlon Harris. He has been on special assignment for BTC out there at the Four Sixes Horse Sale. If you do enjoy this episode, please share with your friends. Word of mouth is always the best advertising. To make your listening easier, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Search for Beyond the Shoots and follow us, like us, rate us, give us comments, let us hear from you. If you like reels, we got reels. Marlon Harris's seven reels that we have put up have gone almost 285,000 watches. So you can check them out on Beyond the Shoots Facebook page. And while you're there, please click follow. And I want to say thank you to Parasite Systems for their support with our podcast. Parasite System is a push-button parasitic diagnostic system for pasture animals, for your horses, cattle, goats, sheep, and chickens, and for now for your companion animals, your dogs, and your cats. You can find them at ParasiteSystems.com. We've got a coupon code BTC023 for 50% off your mail-in testing. And I want to say a big thank you to the IRA Project Facebook group for all their patience, help, and guidance. Mr. Tim Sparks and, of course, Mr. Mar Marlon Harris has really helped us connect with the rodeo greats and bring us reports like this. And this is Beyond the Shoots with Marlon Harris. Until next time, this is Doug Simcox. Thank you for listening. <laughs>